Hello everybody and thanks for coming to the Word of God today and um, it's nice to have you again today. I want to talk on a very strange subject. Um, when you hear the title you, you will wonder what on earth is he talking about. Um, I want to speak today about the bread that flattened the tent. The bread that flattened the tent. Now, before we come to the Word of God and, and show you where this is, I want to speak today about fear. People that are struggling with fears and recurring fears over and over. Maybe you've got fear and the old fears keep coming back. The ugly head of your past fears keep coming back. What do you do? How do you deal with fear that keeps coming back? Are you sick of your old fears? Are you tired, struggling with the same old fears day in, day out? Well, I believe that God has given me a word today for you to help you with your fears. The bread that flattened the tent. Where's that in the Bible? Well, let's turn to the book of Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7, we'll read from verse 9. To verse 15. Listen to what the Bible says. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, that's unto Gideon, Arise, get thee down to the host, for I have delivered it into your hands. But if you fear to go down, and Gideon was a very fearful person, God says, If you do fear, bring with you Pura your servant to the host and thou shalt hear what they say and afterwards shall your hands be strengthened to go down to the host and he went down with Pura and his servant on the outside and the armed men that were in the hosts and the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of, uh, of the east lay in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and it came to the tent, and it smote it and flattened it, and it fell and overturned it, and the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, this is nothing, save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all his host. And lo, it was so that when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, the Lord hath delivered Midian into the hand of the host. Of Midian. So what I want to speak today is the bread that flattened the tent. Now before I go any further I've got three questions for you and how you answer these three questions will reveal a lot about you. Number one, how do you think God sees you? When God looks at you, what does God see? Will you say to me, well, God sees me, he loves me. God sees me through the lens of grace. God loves me through the, the lens of mercy. And that's true. God loves you. Question number two. How do you see yourself? Oh, people can be one of two ways. They can be very proud. They see themselves in a proud way. But most people... They just see themselves as so inadequate. They see themselves as weak, pathetic, inferior, low. They see themselves as shallow and insufficient. They see themselves as nothing to give. Question number three. How do you think the enemy sees you? How does the, oh, well, Johnny, the enemy hates me, the devil hates me, my critics hate me, my, you know, 
How does your enemy see you? This story that we've read is about Gideon and it's about getting inside your mind the right revelation. What we take in really matters. And if you can take in this revelation that I'm about to give you from God's word, I believe it will deal with fear. What we take in changes and determines what we see. For example, if we're always taking in bad information, if we're always taking in sad information, if we're always taking in fearful information, then we will live in a world of fear and hopelessness. Even when I'm preaching, what are you taking in? Are you distracted? Is anything distracting you? I want you to take in this word, this revelation from God, because if you get this, it will transform your life. It really, really will. We read in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16, Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they were joy unto me. They were rejoicing in my heart, and I'm called by your name, O Lord of hosts. Jeremiah said, I, I took your words in. I didn't just hear, but I took it in. I applied the word. And so today, that's what God wants to do in your life today, to get this word into you, to receive this word. It really matters that you get this. And if you're struggling with fear and keep falling at the same post, falling with the same fears, God wants to give you revelation to take in that will transform your life, not just information. Not just revelation, but transformation. God wants you to get the word. And it really matters. It really, really does matter. We read in this chapter, in Judges chapter 7, a remarkable story about a man who was gripped by fear. He lived in fear. His, his life from the morning to evening was gripped and controlled by fear. The Bible says that we pick up our story um, in Judges chapter 6. He was threshing wheat in a wine press in Judges chapter 6 verse 11 and he was hiding and he was cutting, he was sifting and threshing the wheat softly and, and he was doing that because of a fear, a fear of the Midianites. Think about this for just one moment. Gideon <laughs> oh, another sneeze. <laughs> Gideon was hiding, and he was hiding in a wine press. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. It's gone. Ah. Oh. Gideon was hiding in a wine press and he was hiding in a wine press because of fear. His life was gripped by fear, but he was living in fear. And maybe you're listening to me today online and your life is gripped, tortured, tormented by fear. And maybe that's just where you're at. Well, I believe God has given me this word. Gideon was afraid of the Midianites. Keep that in mind. He was afraid of the Midianites. He was afraid. He was afraid of the enemy. He lived in fear. What the enemy will do. What the enemy's going to do next. What the enemy's going to say. You can't live your life like this. You can't live a life where you're always worried what the enemy's going to do. You're always worried what the critics are going to do. You're always worried about the next big thing that's going to come out and wreck your home and wreck your marriage or wreck. You can't live a life like this that's dominated and controlled and manipulated by fear. What we take in really matters. We, we, we've got to be careful here to take this revelation from the Lord. 
You can't live your life in fear what the devil's going to do next, what the enemy's going to do next. The angel of the Lord comes to Gideon in chapter 6 verse 12 and he says, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And I can see Gideon kind of looking around him going, Lord, you've got the wrong person here. Who, me? You think I'm a mighty man of, of valor? I can't get over my fears. I'm gripped by my fears. I'm dominated. My life is in the grip of fear. And, and nothing I do can shift this fear. I'm sinking under my fears. I'm dominated by my fears. And the angel says, the Lord's with you, you mighty man of valor. You, you must have got the wrong person, God. It's, it's not me. He did not feel like a mighty man of valor. He felt like a wimp. God says you're not a wimp. You're a winner. The Lord is with you. And I want you to understand, Christian, you may be defeated. You may feel as if you're, you're weak. You may feel as if you're disillusioned and gripped and dominated and swayed and controlled by your fears. But I want you to know the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor, you mighty woman of valor. You are not a wimp. You are not a coward. You are not a misfit. You're not a pushover. And I want you to get this into you. What you take in really matters. And here's Gideon and he's so fearful. He's living a life of trepidation. He's in fear and he's struggling with his own fears. In a wine press, threshing wheat softly so that the Midianites wouldn't hear him or see him. Do you know God sees potential in you? When Gideon just saw fear, God saw potential. What, what do you see in your life? How do you think God sees you? You may think that you've got no potential. You say, Johnny, I am so weak as a Christian. I'm pathetic. You say, I'm fearful and defeated. So was Gideon at this point. He could not get over his fears. And the Lord came to him at the point. Now, let me just say something about the Midianites. When you said the word Midian in, in the days of Gideon, that would have struck fear in your heart. These Midianites were so fearful, they showed no mercy, they showed no grace, they were ruthless, they were devourers, they were an enemy so strong and dominant and, and they controlled. In fact, when you study this army, they were the first army in history to ever have camels and when you looked at them, their camels and they rode on the camels, they were fierce. An army that could not be beaten. In fact, when you read Judges 7 verse 12, it says they had camels without number. Camels without number. Gideon's fearful again. Here's the old fear coming back. 135,000 Midianites, the Bible says. They were like grasshoppers. They were intimidating. And God raised up the most unlikely person. And God was about to use the most unlikely person. But before God could use him. Before he can get victory over his fear. He needed to get a revelation. A revelation that I want to share with you. In the time that you battle with your fears. God was trying to get it into him. That you don't focus on fear. You don't focus on the enemy. You don't focus on the negative things around you. God does not want you today to look at your overwhelming circumstances. God's trying to give him a new revelation to face fear and to win in the battle. Do you know, that's what God does, doesn't he? God doesn't call us how we are. He calls us like we are going to be. Can I say that again? God does not call us how we are, present tense, but he calls us like we are going to be in the future. God looked at Gideon and at this point he was fearful. 
God says, you're still a mighty man of valor. And God used him in a mighty way in the future. This is about your future. This is about your destiny. You may feel like a failure. You may be a monumental mess right now. Your life may be shattered and on the grounds, but it's not what you are today. It's what you can become in the future. You've got to take in the revelation of God's word. And the Bible speaks many times the opposite of what we're experiencing. Well, Johnny, I'm experiencing depression. The Bible speaks joy. You say, Johnny, I'm experiencing fear. The Bible speaks faith. Johnny, I'm experiencing a storm. The Bible speaks and says, peace be still. It isn't about what you are today. It's about what you're going to be. This was a battle for Gideon, shaking in his boots, fearful, trepidation, sifting and, and threshing wheat in a wine press because of fear, gripped by fear, dominated by fear. And instantly, this man Gideon feels inferior when the Lord says, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. In verse 15, Gideon says, you've picked the wrong man, God. I'm not a mighty man of valor. I am the poorest in my family. I'm the least in my father's house. I'm the least in the tribe. I'm the weakest. God, you've got it wrong. God says, I've not got it wrong. Because God loves to use the weak. Christian, when will you realize God uses weak things? Gideon brought up all the excuses why God couldn't use him. And God says, I'm still going to use you. But before I use you, before you get over your fears, I'm trying to instill in you the right revelation. What is the right revelation? I'm, I'm getting there. Just hold your horses. Did you know that Gideon had another name? Gideon in Judges chapter 7 verse 1 was called Jerubel, Jerubel or Jerubal, whatever way you want to pronounce it. Jerubal or Baal means contender of Baal or challenger of Baal. Do you remember? God said to Gideon, I want you to go to your father's house and I want you to pull down the altar that your father has erected the Baal there. Gideon did that. He pulled down the altar of Baal. He cut down the grove and the trees around it and he, he pulled it down and he got this reputation, changed his name from Gideon to Jurabeel, contender, challenger of Baal. He was getting a bit of a reputation. The people were going to kill him and his reputation went out. Here's a contender of Baal. I don't know about you, but I want to be a contender. I want to be a challenger to the things around me in this world that's not of God. I want to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. Do you? I want to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. What did God do to get in, to get him to believe that he can win the battle? What did God put in him to get him over his fears. God says, get away down and listen to how the enemy sees you. Now we're coming to the revelation. God said to Gideon, are you fearful? Yes, Lord. I want you to get down to the enemy's camp and listen because how the enemy sees you and then God showed Gideon how God sees you. That will affect how he sees himself. In other words, if we can see how God sees us, if we can see how the enemy sees us, then we will change how we see ourselves. How do you think the devil sees you? Oh, the devil sees me as weak. The devil sees me as puny and pathetic. The devil sees me. Oh, he hates me. The devil hates me. And that's true. He does. But how does he see a spirit-filled, blood-bought believer in Jesus Christ? Look at this. Judges 7 verse 9. 
The Lord said, Arise, get down to the host, for I've delivered it into your hand. Are you afraid, Gideon? Yes, Lord. And I love the fact that God does not condemn Gideon. He knows that he's gripped by fear his whole life. And here it is, fear's coming up again. He had fear in the wine press when he's sifting the wheat. And now he's afraid again. Are you afraid, Gideon? Yes, Lord, I am afraid. Look what the Bible says in verse 10. If you're fearful, take Pura. Take Pura, your servant. And what did he do in verse 11? He did take Pura. And the Lord said, get down to the Midian host, the, the both of you. And I can see these two people making their way and sneaking their way down on the outskirts and making their way down onto the beach because that's where they were. They were across the beach. The Bible describes them as grasshoppers for number, camels that no man can count. And I can see them coming down to this enemy that's like the grains of the, the, the beach and they're described for, for grasshoppers for a multitude. And then all of a sudden he's got Pura because he's afraid. God says, take him because you're afraid. And then all of a sudden the fear comes again. Not a bit of wonder. He looks out over this vast army and he realizes this is the army that I'm supposed to come against. This is the army that I'm supposed to destroy, God. You've called me a mighty man of valor and I can't even get over the fears in my own heart. You want me to kill and destroy this army, but I can't even get over the fear in my own mind. Fear. Raises its ugly head again. The old fear comes back and Gideon's gripped. Here he is. He sees the multitude. He's gripped it and he begins to flounder. It raises up. What do we do when our old fears keep coming back? What's happening? He's fearful again and again and again. And, and God does not condemn him. God wants him to know that as he looks at this vast army over the beach, like grasshoppers, God was going to give him something to remove his fear. Do you see that, in it? that army getting? Yes. Get closer. God told him not to run away from the thing that he feared, but to get closer. He feared the Midianites. Gideon's whole life was feared. He feared the Midianites. God says, get closer. Do you know the thing that you fear right now? God's saying, get closer. Not in your own strength. If you're going to get closer to your fears, you got to do it in the strength of God. You've got to get closer to your fears. Not to run away from your fears, but to get closer. God wants you to get closer to your fears. Examine your fears in the strength of God. Look at this. And Gideon and Pura, they make their way up on the outskirts of the beach and they make their way down. Now notice what the Bible says in verse 13. We're getting to it now, the revelation. Don't miss this. Verse 13. When Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream to his fellow. And said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread. Here's the bread. Came tumbling down to the host of Midian, and it overcame the tent. It smote it, it overturned it, it flattened it. This barley bread coming down the mountain comes into the, the, the Midian camp, and it flattens the tent. Imagine having a dream of a loaf coming down a hill and flattening a tent. Verse 14. The man that's listening to the dream gives the interpretation of the dream in verse 14. And he says, This is nothing else. See if the, the sword of Gideon, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian. One tells a dream of a loaf of bread coming down a hill and hitting a tent and flattening And the other guy says, Boy, I can tell you, do you not know who what the interpretation of that is. That's Gideon. He's going to come in here like a loaf of bread rolling down the hill and he's going to flatten this tent. God says that Gideon was described like a, a loaf of bread in this interpretation. God gave this dream. God gave this dream. He wasn't described as a massive rock. 
Gideon wasn't described as a chariot going down the mountain. He wasn't described as a hammer or a sword or a spear. Barley bread. Barley bread, when I began to study this, is bread that feeds animals. It is the poorest bread that you could get. The poorest in Israel would eat. Those people that were the poorest of the poor, hand-to-mouth existence. It was the food of animals. If you're in dire straits, that's the kind of bread that you eat. If you're in real poverty, you eat barley bread. Gideon was described as barley bread, the weakest, the poorest. And yet God used the weakest and God used the poorest and God used this man that was gripped by fear to roll down that hill like a loaf of barley bread that's going to flatten the whole tent of Midian. The other guy says, that's, that's Gideon. That's what the interpretation is. Now I've got to say something. How did these two Midian men talking about their dream, how did they know about Gideon? Stay with me here. He was sifting wheat in a wine press quietly so that the Midianites wouldn't hear about him. He was the, the weakest, the poorest in his family. How did they hear? I'll tell you how. Because when he cut down the grove, when he cut down his father's altar that was given to Baal, the Midianites worshipped Baal. That was their God. And they heard of this contender, Jurabel. They heard of Gideon. They heard of this challenger of Baal. And his reputation went right throughout Midian. There's a contender out there. You know, I want the devil to know that there's contenders to you. There's contenders to hell. There's contenders to the devil. I want to be a challenger to the world, the flesh and the devil. I want a reputation for Jesus Christ. And the Midianites heard of this challenger. And they heard this is the very man that's going to come and fight the Midianites. His reputation went right through because of that one thing that he did on his father's grove. Now please listen. Gideon feared the Midianites his whole life. But according to this dream and this interpretation, they feared Gideon. We often say that we're nothing, we're feeble, we're weak, we're puny. The hordes of hell are against us. The devil is, is against us. And we, we, we're so fearful, aren't we? I pray that you will get this new revelation. And what is the new revelation? Are you ready? The enemy is afraid of you. Gideon was afraid of the Midianites his whole life. But in reality, they were afraid of him. This was the key to Gideon getting courage. This was the key for Gideon getting over his fear. This was the key for Gideon winning the battle and getting victory. Because he went down and he faced his fear. He faced the thing that he ran away from his whole life. He faced his fear. He looked fear eyeball to eyeball. And when he looked at his fear... Fear began to shake. The enemy began to shake. And they were afraid of Gideon. I'm telling you, the devil is afraid of every blood-bought, spirit-filled believer. And you say, oh, that's nonsense. I'm going to show you this from the word of God. This is a new revelation. They were afraid of him. We read in Isaiah chapter 14 that when we see the devil... When we see Lucifer, he's fallen. When we see the devil at, at the end of the world. The Bible teaches us in Isaiah chapter 14. We will see the devil bound. And we will say, is this the one? Is this the one 
that deceived the world and caused the nations to tremble? Is this really the, the one that, that caused all this pain and devastation? Is that him? My whole life I've been intimidated by you. My whole life I've been fearful. My whole life I've been shaking in my boots. And Is this it? Is, is that it? The enemy is intimidated by you, Christian. The enemy is intimidated by you. And when we stand in the strength of God, not in your own strength, because the devil will wipe you out, but in the strength of God, oh, he's intimidated. He's shaking in his boots. The devil trembles when he sees the weakest saint on his knees. This is a revelation. It was a revelation for Gideon. And all of a sudden he got courage. He got confidence and assurance that I can go down and I can wipe these Midian, Midianites out. All of hell is intimidated by the people of God. The devil can be intimidated by the people of God. You may feel like Gideon, nothing to give on important, shallow, weak, Tired, slow in mind, incapable, unqualified, the least in your family. You may be like a barley bread, just like a loaf of bread. You're so poor, you're so weak, you're insignificant and insufficient. God uses weak things and that barley bread went down that hill and flattened, flattened that tent. Hallelujah. The devil is afraid of every blood-bought, spirit-filled believer. You say, Johnny, that's not the case. What? Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I'm telling you, that is truth. That is a revelation from God. We have the same power in us that rose Christ up from the dead. We have the Holy Spirit in us, and that spirit is the spirit of resurrection. It's the spirit of of resurrection. You say, I can't overcome this. I can't defeat this. I can't win against this addiction. I can't overcome this fear. What? We have the spirit of resurrection in us and it's the spirit of God. It's the Holy Ghost and it's in you. You can overcome your fears. We do ourselves a great injustice. We do when we put ourselves down because the power of Christ is in us. We look at the enemy and we see them like grasshoppers. We shake and we're hiding in caves and we're hiding in wine presses and we're trying to serve the Lord and we're trying to do it quietly because of fear. But I'm telling you, I want to be a contender. You are a challenger to, to the devil, to the darkness in this world. You can make a difference, child of God. You've got the Holy Ghost in you. You've got the blood of Jesus Christ as a covering. And the devil is intimidated by you. Hallelujah. A barley loaf tumbling down a hill and flattening a tent. You got to understand that Gideon's army was reduced down to the 300 against the 135,000. Now that works out the stats 450 to 1. And it never hit me until this week. Where else in the Bible is there 450 against 1? Do you remember Elijah, Mount Carmel? How many prophets of Baal were there? 450 against 1. Here it is again, Baal, a contender. I pray that God will help us to be contenders and challengers and to stand and face your fear. Look at your fear, eyeball to eyeball, face to face. We can overcome in Christ. Not because of our own strength, but because of the strength of God. I pray that the devil will hear that there's contenders out there. And it's a revelation from God. It's a revelation. Receive, take in the right truth. Not the sad stuff. Not the depressing stuff. Not the COVID stuff. I want you to take in this revelation that the enemy is afraid of you. Wow. 
Now the Bible says in Judges chapter 7 verse 15, it says, And it was so that when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, when he heard the interpretation, he worshipped. He worshipped. Hallelujah. I praise you, God. The enemy's defeated. Hallelujah. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Almighty God. I thank you that the enemy is overcome and he is afraid of Christ in me. He's afraid of the Holy Spirit in me and he returns back to the, the host of Israel and he says, Arise, the Lord has delivered Midian into our hands. But it was this revelation that changed it all. It was this revelation that gave him courage. It was this revelation how the enemy is afraid of you and you've been afraid your whole life. When in reality, they are afraid of me. Praise the Lord. The bread rolled down the hill and flattened the tent. Every spirit-filled, blood-bought believer is known in hell. You say that's nonsense. Acts chapter 19, do you remember? The sons of Sceva tried to cast out devils and, and it ripped them and tore them and they ran out naked and the demons spoke. And the Bible says in verse 15, the, de the devil spoke and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Well, we know that Jesus is known in hell. He's the son of God, but Paul was known in hell. Because he was bought by the blood of Jesus. Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that every believer is known in hell. I really do believe that. Do you realize the power and the authority that we have? The Bible says in Psalm 18 verse 39. For thou hast girded me with strength into the battle. You have subdued under me those that have rose up against me. He's our potentate. He's our king. Um, I'm not going to lose this battle. I've got Christ on my side. The Bible says in Psalm 18 verse 42. He will beat them small before the wind. I cast them out like the dirt in the street. The, the, the enemy is going to be ground to powder under our feet. He will. He has. Read Psalm 18. We don't need to fear the enemy. The enemy's afraid of us. Read Psalm 18, verse 43. We will be delivered. The enemy will serve you. Verse 44. The enemies will submit to you. Verse 45. Your enemies will be afraid of nowhere to run. Verse 46. The Lord lives, blessed be the rock. Verse 47. He subdued our enemies under our feet. Verse 48. God delivers us from our enemies. And verse 49, I'm going to praise our God. I'm going to worship him because the enemy fears me. The enemy fears you. Johnny, I just don't feel it. Because you're still in your own strength. You need to do it in the strength of God. You need to realize that it has to be done in the strength of God. There's no other way that you're going to do it. There's no other way that you're going to make it. And it has to be done in the strength of God. Now, maybe you're still not convinced. And maybe you're saying to me, Johnny, it's not going to happen. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. If you don't believe this, do you believe if Jesus said it? Would you believe it? If, the, if I was to tell you the enemy is afraid of you, every Christian... Would you believe me if I told you that Jesus said it? He did. We read in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus sent the 70 out. Remember? And they returned and they said, The devils are subject unto us. The demons are trembling. And through your name we have the power. Even the devils are, are doing what we're telling them to do. Why? Because you've got the authority, you've got the power. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread down the serpents and tread down the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy so that nothing can hurt you. That's the words of Jesus. He's give us power. He's give us power 
the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We have got authority. We can bind and loose on this earth and by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the Holy Ghost that's in me, that spirit of resurrection that's in me, I can face my fears today. I can look them in the eye and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm not intimidated by you, devil. I've got Jesus on my side. I've got Jesus on my side. I'm going to finish with this. James chapter 2 verse 19 says this. The demons believe and tremble. The devil is not afraid of religious Christians. The devil is not afraid of carnal Christians. The devil is not afraid of Christians that gossip. No, but he's afraid of those that are led by the Holy Spirit and driven by the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit and got the blood of Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, I'm known in hell. And I'm not boasting in that my boast is in Jesus, but every spirit-filled believer is known in hell. I'm not defeated today. I will not be bound today. I will not be a pushover or a, or a wimp. No, I'm a winner. I'm going to get close to my fears in the strength of God. I'm going to look fear face to face. And I'm going to rebuke my fears in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because fear is afraid of me. The devil is afraid of me. Because... Christ is with me. Christ is on my side. You're blessed. You're highly favoured. God is with you. And when the Lord came, and when the Lord spoke to Gideon at the very beginning, he said, you mighty man of valour. He was. But it was over his future. God wants to bless you today. God wants you to get this revelation and not just how God sees you. He loves you. God looks at you and he loves you. How do you see yourself? I believe when you see how God looks at you and when you see how the enemy looks at you, then I believe that you will see how we should look at ourselves. And I believe that when you see that the enemy is afraid, that the enemy is defeated because of Calvary and the blood of of Jesus Christ then we can face our fears and we can win <laughs> the loaf the barley bread rolling down a hill it's going to flatten the tent you claim that promise today that's a revelation from God the enemy is afraid be bold be strong for the, the Lord thy God is with you whithersoever you go Receive that. Take that in today. And may God bless you. Would you leave a message? Would you leave, you know, make contact with us if you need prayer requests for anything? People have been doing this over the weeks and we're so pleased to hear from people all over the world. I got an email from someone in London just this week and how God has been really blessing their home and moving through the ministry and uh, I can't say too much about it but I'm telling you God is moving in mighty ways someone gave give their life to Jesus this week through the ministry to God be the glory keep making contact with us go on to our website if you want to support us and more gospelfellowship.com leave us an email we'll get back to you and may the Lord bless let me pray for you Father I believe that we have victory because of the cross. Father, let us realize how you look at us, how the devil looks at us, how we see ourselves. I pray, Lord, that we will rebuke fear on the authority of what you've given to us. Lord, we can step over, we can tread down serpents and scorpions. I thank you, Lord, that you are a king of kings and Lord of lords. I pray peace over the people today. Give them the desires of their heart and bring healing to broken lives today. 
Lord, I believe in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless your word and set us on fire for your glory. For Jesus' name's sake. Amen. God bless you.